Yo, 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 yo. What's up, guys? This is Nick from Part Time Pilot. Today's video is going to be on weather fronts. Okay, so let's get started. So, um, a little bit of background the reason that they're called fronts is actually way back like 100 years or so ago. Um, they were compared to the fronts of a battlefield in ground based war. So, you know, there's two armies battling, and where they meet is called the front. So we have our blue army here and our red army here, and the front, where the armies meet, is right here. Okay, so the front is where the two armies meet. In terms of weather, uh, the front is the boundary between two air masses. Okay, so we got cold air and warm air, and where those two meet, that's the front. So it's like the boundary or dividing line of the two air masses, so when you cross that line, you're gonna feel a change in the temperature and also uh, humidity as well and other factors. So at the boundary between cold and warm air masses or the front, the reaction of air masses meeting can bring large changes in weather, uh, especially if the difference in temperature is high where the weather will be the most intense. Okay, so we mentioned like if you're flying over, you know, from the warm air into the cold air, you're going to feel a drop in temperature. You're probably going to feel a change in pressure, change in humidity. You're going to get different things that you as a pilot care about. But also in this boundary where you're getting this mixture, you're getting a lot of mixing airflow, you know, temperature, uh, changes in pressure. It's going to cause wind. It's going to cause different types of weather. And when this uh, change in temperature is high, that's going to be even more intense weather. So there are four types of fronts that pilots hear about. You have cold fronts, warm fronts, occluded fronts, and stationary fronts. So let's cover all those real quick. So on a warm front, a warm front describes when warm air is the air that's moving. And so warm air is moving into a cold air mass. So the warm air is replacing the cold air. So warm fronts are drawn with a red line with red semicircles on aviation weather charts. So as you can see right here, uh, we also have one right here, um, and that's about it. So um, warm fronts, uh, they have these red semicircles, and the direction that they point is the direction that the warm air is moving. So the, this warm air is moving uh, to the northeast in this picture. Uh, during a warm front, the warm air moves in to replace the cold air as we talked about, okay? So we got our cold air over here and our warm air over here, and the warm air is moving in to replace the cold air. Um, and if we remember our lessons on density altitude, we would remember that warm air is less dense than cold air, which means that if you were to put them in a bottle together and they didn't mix, the warm air would float to the top, right? So it's less dense, so it floats up to the top. Um, so this means that the, the lighter warm air moving in right, is going to actually rise up and above this cold air because it's lighter, it's less dense. Uh, as the warmer rises, it cools, remember? So all, all air, most air has water vapor in it. And then as that rises and cools, the water vapor will condense. Um, so when that happens, you start to get clouds. Um, and then, so as it rises and cools, the density will start to drop, right? So it's cooling, so the density is dropping. And eventually you reach an area where the density is going to match, so it's not, it's not going to continue to rise, right? It's just going to kind of settle out at this level. So this is why warm fronts are associated with widespread uh, stat stratus-type thin clouds, okay, like you see here. Um, it's because the, the warm air rises, it condenses, but then it reaches its point where it doesn't really rise anymore and kind of goes up and above and slides over the cold air. Um, and then as the warm front moves in, the clouds uh, thicken. So as the warm air keeps moving and keeps moving in, you get more rising, more rising, and then these clouds get thicker and thicker. And then you start to get precipitation, um, which is usually light precipitation, uh, but widespread in a warm front. Uh, so pilots will experience a temperature change and likely a pressure change when flying across any front, okay? So when you fly it from here to here, you're going to get changes in pressure and temperature. Uh, you're going to want to change your altimeter setting, get an updated altimeter setting, and you're also going to find some weather. 
Uh, near warm fronts, you can expect widespread precipitation, uh, usually bad visibility because the ceilings are a low and you usually have widespread precipitation, which leads to the bad visibility. And then it also can trap things like dust and uh, stuff like that. And then um, the turbulence is generally low because although the, the air is rising, it's rising kind of slowly, and then, like we said, it kind of levels out, so the turbulence is, is usually pretty low. All right, so let's move on to cold fronts. A cold front describes when cold air is moving in to replace a warm air mass. Um, and then on aeronautical charts, these are the blue lines uh, with blue triangles. So you got one here. That's the only one you see here. Um, and then the triangles point in the direction that the cold air is moving. So this cold front is moving east, uh, mostly east, okay? Uh, during a cold front, the cold air moves in to replace the warm air. We talked about that. Um, and then just to review, cold air is more dense, uh, which means if they're put into the bottle together and didn't mix, the cold air would sink to the bottom, right? The warm air is less dense, so it would go to the top. So cold air, more dense. Let's remember that. And then as the more dense cold air moves in, it pushes the lighter warmer up and pushes underneath it acting as a wedge. So when we had the warmer moving, it was lighter, so it just kind of slid up. It was like it it's not very strong. It's a bunch of light particles, so it hits this more dense cold air and it's just like, "Okay, I'm going to go up and over the top." Cold air is real dense, right? You got all these particles in here. It's very dense, it's very strong. And so what it does is it just kind of, as it moves in, it just kind of pushes the warm air out of the way. So this wedge type behavior, it makes the warm air move, actually forces the warm air up and it forces it up a very steep slope. Um, so as more of the cold air moves in, uh, more warm air is forced higher and higher. And it's forced up at a much higher rate than when a warm front is moving in and kind of slides up over the top. It's, uh, it just kind of wedges it and pushes the warm air straight up. And this, all this vertical development that you get from the, war the cold air wedging that warm air up causes, again, the water vapor to condense as it rises. So we talk about cold fronts causing more vertical movement. Why is this? Well, I said because it's more dense, right? It's more tightly packed. Um, but a good analogy is to think of an army with many, much more soldiers meeting an army uh, with less soldiers, right? So they come in, the army with more soldiers would be able to push through and just wedge through and move out the army with uh, less sol less weaker soldiers, right? So kind of think of it like that, or just think of it like a wedge, um, wedging through some sand or dirt or anything like that. Um, so this, again, so that's the key with cold fronts. Uh, because it's more dense and because it just pushes, wedges that warmer up, you get a lot of vertical development. So because it's much more vertical development, you're going to get vertically developing clouds. What are vertical developing clouds? These are like cumuliform type clouds. So they're going to keep building vertically and vertically uh, until you can actually get thunderstorms uh, and then parts of thunderstorms are heavy rain showers. So cold fronts are associated with vertically developing clouds, cumuliform clouds, uh, and even thunderstorms. Uh, so again, pilots will experience a temperature change when they cross any front, but near cold fronts, you really have to expect poor weather as a pilot because again, that vertical high amount of vertical development is not what we want as pilots. Vertical air is bad for pilots. Why? It These vertical developing clouds create thunderstorms. We all know that thunderstorms are bad. It creates rain showers, heavy rain showers, uh, which when there's heavy rain showers, there's bad visibility. There's lightning, there's wind shear, right? There's high winds. Um, and, uh, and then that vertical rising air uh, can cause moderate to uh, most often heavy turbulence. Um, at one thing though, after a cold front passes, so after it passes through, a pilot can expect um, clear, fair, but cold weather. All right, so next let's go on to occluded fronts. So occluded front is a bit more uh, confusing. It's a bit more detailed um, to understand. So uh, it describes when a faster moving front 
catches up with a slower moving front, which then causes essentially the merging of three different air masses. Um, so I'll, I'll get into explaining that. Um, on a uh, So there's two types of occluded fronts. There's a warm occluded and a cold occluded. So warm occluded would be when a warm front catches up with a cold front, and a cold occluded would be when a cold front catches up with a warm front. Almost all the time you're going to see a cold occluded front. Uh, that is because cold fronts move about two times faster than warm fronts. Uh, occluded fronts are shown on weather charts as purple lines. So we got this one here. And then the, the purple lines have both triangles and semicircles that are purple. Um, as I mentioned, the most common occluded front is a cold occluded front, uh, where a faster moving cold front chases behind a slower moving front. So if you just look at this side of the picture, this is a scenario we've already seen, right? We have warm air, we have warm front moving in uh, to cold air. So we, have a, we just have a warm front, right? The warm air is moving in. Now, if we have a cold front behind it over here, and the cold front moving faster, eventually that cold air is going to catch up with and overtake that warm air. And when that happens, then it finally meets this other cold air over here. And what you get is you get the merging of these three air masses, okay? So you get this kind of just like this mess in here, and that is the occlusion right here. Uh, occluded fronts ha can have the care because of this, they can have the characteristics of both cold and warm fronts. This means that they can have both vertically developing clouds, turbulence, uh, and even widespread stratus type clouds can be present. Uh, weather in an occlusion is usually more tightly packed, right? Because you get everything kind of pushing into this this area here, and then uh, this causes clouds to become oversaturated. So um, it's tightly packed in here. The clouds become oversaturated, so you usually get heavy rain showers. And then uh, because the warm air mass is forced up and it's surrounded, right? So you have this cold air moving, and now the warm air is just kind of up here. And now you got cold front on, on this side, you got cold air on this side. So when you're, you're flying through in a cold uh, occluded front, the temperature change or the pressure change that you'd usually get flying across the front isn't going to be as much, right? Because you're going from cold air to cold air now. However, if you were to be flying up here, you would fly through this warm air, but uh, it's kind of hidden, right? Because you get cold air, cold air down here, but then you kind of have this like hidden packet of warm air. And this is actually why they call it occluded front, because the word occluded actually means hidden. Um, so you have to look out for that um, and just know those details about occluded fronts. All right, next, uh, stationary fronts is the last one we'll talk about. Uh, stationary front describes when both cold and warm fronts merge, uh, but neither front is strong enough to replace the other and the result is just stagnant merging of both air masses. So they're just stagnant, they're not moving. And uh, these are shown on weather charts with, basically it's a combination of a cold front and a warm front symbol. So you get both the red semicircles and the blue triangles on, on the weather charts. Uh, in a stationary front, pilots will experience a temperature change, just like they always would, and likely a pressure change. Um, and then, in a stationary front, you are likely to see weather similar to warm and cold fronts, um, and it's common to see clouds and even pre precipitation across the front. Uh, surface winds along a stationary front will generally blow parallel to the frontal zone, um, so in this way, so if this pilot was flying across, you would uh, feel a crosswind across the front. Okay, so that has been Fronts. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and understood it. If you have any questions, as always, comment below. And as always, follow us at Instagram at Part Period Time Period Pilot or Facebook. Um, we have a Facebook study group. Just in group, search Part Time Pilot. And then um, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do that. Uh, we're planning on making a lot more videos, so uh, it'll give you notifications to check on check on those. All right, thanks for watching.